going on guys, Nobly here, and welcome back to another episode of Mondays. So, today we're back, I'm using a new camera, I think it looks a lot better than the uh, other camera I was using, so hopefully you guys like this one. I think the audio is going to be quite a bit better as well, I could be wrong about that, but I think it will be better, and uh, I'm going to try and do a little bit of a new format with... Uh, this episode today so we'll see how that works out in other news uh, I have been away for a really long time and if you watched a couple of my other videos you would know that but there's something I've been keeping from you guys a long time and I've been hinting at it for a while but it's finally done I don't have a video made on it yet but it's coming guys are you ready because the budget gun project is just about complete. Check that out guys. So this has been a very long-term project. This gun is ridiculous. Like I cannot wait to do the video on this thing. So that's all I'm going to show you about it today because we're not here to look at the budget gun. We're here to answer your question. Today we have a couple questions uh, that I will answer. I'm going to answer two today. Again, as always, you guys really need to put your comments down or your questions in the comment section so we can answer them for next week. But today we're going to be, uh, let's see, answering two questions from Eric Wall. So, uh, today's two questions, one of them is, what do you think about the G&G combat machine? Now, I have mixed opinions about the combat machine. Now, the internals of the combat machine are kind of iffy. Now, they're good for CQB indoor play, if that's what you're into. If you're doing anything outdoors, I'd probably stay away from them. GMG like to focus on the externals of their gun a lot, which makes them like pretty to the eye, so you'd want to buy them, but the internals are on par with something you could get for that same amount of money. That being said, if you're getting a beginner gun or an immediate intermediate gun, uh, I'd say go with the CYMA AK-47 if you don't mind switching platforms. Next question from Eric Wall is, what editing software do you use? So, um, let's see. I use three different kinds of software. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but it's true. Um, I do use three different kinds. Um, if it's like a really quick video that I want to do, I'll just use Windows Movie Maker because it's quick, simple to use. Um, by the way, all these are free. Uh, if I need to do one that's a little bit more complex, I'll use GoPro Studio, which is a little bit more in-depth and complicated, but still not too bad. And if I want to do something really complicated, like say one of my Airsoft videos, if you guys don't watch those, I definitely go recommend checking them out. Especially the newer ones, because those are pretty good. Uh, they're edited nicely. Uh, there's never really a dull moment in them. But uh, if I want to do something like that, I'll use HitFilm 3 Express. That's what I use for my complex things. It doesn't run the smoothest, but it has the most features. So, uh, those are the three I use. They're all free. Feel free to download them. So guys, that's going to be it for the questions portion of this week. Again, always put your comments in the comments section, of course. And now I think I'm going to add a little bit extra to the show because we usually run short because we don't have enough questions. Now I'm going to be skipping over to this new section where I'm just going to be talking about a specific topic that's been on my mind this week. This week, it's been fights in airsoft. Now, it just amazed me because I was thinking about this all week and actually today or maybe really late yesterday, Airsoftology just came out with a fights on airsoft video. So I thought that was really funny, but I figured I'd talk about it as well. But first, let's check out some fights in airsoft. <laughs> Okay, so now that you guys have seen all those, it's completely crazy. Like, the fights in Airsoft are way over the top, way more than they should be. 
And I just want to talk a little bit about this, especially if you are the one that's always calling uh, someone else's hits for them or anything like that. It's definitely not a good thing to be doing out on the airsoft field because it does provoke those fights and stuff. And then those videos start to go viral and then you get these laws like uh, that one that was passed, uh, I forgot even where it was, but it was pretty much going, let me bring out the gun again here, it was pretty much going to be tape here, 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 and I think maybe on the barrel, I'm not sure about that, but in addition to all that, you also have to put a permanent fixed plug in the end. And of course, when you put a plug in the barrel, you're not going to get BBs out of it. So it would have completely killed Airsoft, which would have been an extremely bad thing. And of course, none of us want that as Airsoft players. So my message to you guys this week is, if you're one of those guys that always calls someone hits for them, or is always complaining that someone isn't calling their hits, or anything like that, Never take that stuff into your own hands. Always go find a ref and they will take care of it. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.